Good evening. This is 11th of February 2020. Welcome to my unannounced live broadcast. The awareness for Nigeria disintegration. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Williams Aja. Thank you for joining me this evening. This is 11th of February 2020. Nelly Jude, my own sister, thank you for joining me. Uche, thank you for joining me. Ezibo, thank you for joining me. Ezibo. Uh, Lua, thank you for joining me. William Aja, again, I see you, my brother. I see you, young. I see you, Ofumwampo. Thank you for joining me. You know, what we are doing now is, like I said yesterday during my live broadcast yesterday, we are following Nigeria government. This terrorist government, we are following them bomber to bomber. We have come to a stage where it is not just once in a while. We give you people live broadcast. We the 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 uh, the number of videos we are making on daily basis are reducing, and live broadcasts are increasing. So what is happening now is that we have changed from the face of those all the time videos and all that. We are coming live. As the event happens, we are coming to let you know what is going on. To let you know the reason why you must not support Nigeria again. To let you know the reason why you have to support Nigeria disintegration. If you are a Yoruba man, the reason why you must support Oduduwa Republic. If you are a Biafra man, the reason why you must support Biafra Republic if you are from the middle belt, the reason why you must support Nigeria disintegration because when Nigeria is disintegrated, your life is saved as a man from the middle belt. So thank you for joining me. We are waiting for 700 viewers. 700 viewers, How? here we go. So thank you all. Those that did not mention your name yet, Chinedu Celestine, Chigo Zio Kafo, Thank you for joining me, Chino. So, Wanda Ogidi, thank you for joining me. John Pedro, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Oba Gold, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Chelsea Marshall Benedict, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Now we go ahead with this gospel. The gospel, the awareness. If you have friends who have not liked this page or who are yet to join our live, and he or she wanted to join, invite them now to join and listen to this awareness. You all know what happened yesterday. That was uh, on Sunday, day before yesterday. The Boko Haram members, they killed over 30 people and abducted our women and children. In Borono State. And... Why have I come this evening to give you live broadcast? It's because what I'm about to tell you will make Nigeria to begin to think. The army, Nigeria military, Nigeria military came to give statement. Nigeria military came to give statement on the killing of these 30 Nigerians and on the abduction of our women and our children in Borono State. Nigeria military came to give statement. Do you know what they say? Do you know what Nigeria military said? Nigeria military said this. Of course, when they want to commit this kind of atrocity, when they want to display impunity, they will send military soldiers from the south to give that statement. So, this statement is coming from a southern soldier, a southern general called General 
Adeneyi. General Olusegun Adeneyi, the theater commander, reacting to governor of Borono State's accusation against Nigeria military, said he blamed the attack on the travelers because the travelers disobeyed Nigeria Army's coffee. I hope that international community, I hope that the Nigeria Senate, I hope that the Nigeria House of Representatives, I hope that the Nigerians are listening to this, what I'm about to say. Nigeria military are blaming the dead. Nigeria military, they have shifted the blame from good luck, Jonathan. They have shifted the blame from PDP. They have shifted the blame from Nigerians. Now they are blaming the dead. They are blaming victims of Boko Haram. They are blaming those, those children who have been abducted by Boko Haram. They are blaming those women, those young girls who is now in Boko Haram captivity. They are blaming this Innocent Nigerians who never committed any crime, only that they are moving freely in a supposed country that they have government. And Nigeria military came to start blaming the victim of Boko Haram attack this last Sunday. They are blaming the dead, the 30 Nigerians that, um, that were murdered. They are blaming, who knows? Only God knows how many numbers, how many Nigerians were abducted, how many children were abducted. Only God knows. Because there is nobody that is coming to give you the exact number of people that were abducted. If 30 people can be killed... And military did not challenge them. They killed 30 Nigerians and abducted many. And what did the Nigerian military come to say? Let me read it to Nigerians. Let it be on record. Let it be on record that after the attack, the recent attack, the latest attack by Boko Haram, Nigerian military came and blamed those travelers. Nigeria military say, we blame the attack travelers for, uh, for disobeying the 5 p.m. curfew. Nigeria military placed a curfew on highway, on the highway, the, the highway of Medugri and Damatru, the capital of Yobe state. They placed Curfew on highway. And now they are blaming these victims of Boko Haram for disobeying 5 p.m. curfew. Now, the question you will be asking, the question I want Nigerians and the international community, you see, this is one of the reasons we there is no anybody who is reasonable from the southern part of Nigeria should begin if we eat this event should make you wake up and know that it is time to divide nigeria it is time to divide nigeria now how can the military nigeria military place curfew on express road 5 pm if you are a security personnel you are a Nigeria soldier. You are the Nigeria security agent. You place curfew on expressway from 5 p.m. Which means, as a security agent, who place that curfew on that those on those areas, it means that you are on top of the situation. It means that the, your men 
are present where in the area of that curfew. So, I am making it now public that Nigerian military committed the killing, not Boko Haram. I want to make it public. I am laying this allegation against Nigeria army that they committed the killing. These killings of Nigerians, these killings and abduction of over how many people from Nigeria, from women and children last Sunday, that it was Nigeria military. If it is not Nigeria military, come and prove me wrong. I am Simon Ekpa on this day is accusing Nigeria military for killing of over 30 Nigerians in Yobe state. Do you know why I'm accusing them? I am accusing Nigeria military and it is left for Nigeria military to come and clear and clarify how you place a curfew on a road, on express road, and you don't have your security personnel, you don't have those who are fighting Boko Haram, you don't have those who place that curfew on that express road. And Boko Haram killed, according to you, people now came and breached the curfew, which you placed, which means you are in that place where the Boko Haram attacked people. Because you can't place curfew and go and start sleeping. Is that what you are telling us? Is the Nigerian military telling us that they place curfew and then they go to their barracks and start sleeping? You cannot place curfew and you are not there. Because it means you place curfew telling people not to come out after 5 p.m. It means that anybody you see after 5 p.m., everything that happened to that person, it is coming from you. That is what curfew means. You can't place curfew in Lagos State as, a Le as Lagos State is today. You tell people not to come out uh, 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 in Surulere area of Lagos State because there is curfew from 7 p.m. And then after placing the curfew, people came by 7 p.m. to Surulere and they were all killed. And then you come out the next day to say, we told you people not to come out by 7 p.m. in Surulere. Now criminals killed you. How can you place curfew people, for people not to come to Surulere and then you go to uh, 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 barracks? To, is that what you are telling us? Are you telling us that if you place a curfew in Surulere, you will go back to your barracks and stay in barracks and you don't care what is hap happening in the curfew you place in Surulere? That is what the Nigeria that is what the Nigerian military are telling us. They say that the travelers are to blame because they disobeyed the curfew of 5 p.m. on the expressway from Damatru to Medugiri. So Nigerian military claim that because these people disobeyed the curfew and for that reason they are justifying the killings of these people. This is military doing. They have killed these people so that the Senate will release the money they are demanding. This is the game. And I am accusing Nigerian military today, if you did not kill these people that, that were murdered by Boko Haram, and if you did not abduct the remaining ones to give to the Boko Haram for the sponsorship, come and tell us, how can you place a curfew in expressway and you are not there? Or did you confront the Boko Haram members? Because we are yet to read in any news that during this attack, army repelled them. We, 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 we are yet to read that news. Or are you people hiding it? it do, does it mean that you are hiding, telling Nigerians that you fought with that Boko Haram, got battle, and they retreated? We have not seen where army come to say they fought and they repelled that attack on Boko Haram. No. They attacked, killed men, and then made their way with the abducted Nigerians. And you, as a military man, you came publicly, shamefully to say you placed a curfew. And these travelers that are now dead, 
disobeyed your curfew. So for that reason, we cannot blame military. Is that that is what they are telling us? And nobody is asking question. And the Nigeria Senate is not asking question that this killing were were done by Nigeria military. They carried out this killing so that Nigeria Senate will release money to them. That is what is happening. And the, all the military that carry this are Boko Haram members, and they are all Muslim from the north. So if you say that it was not military that killed these Nigerians, these 30 people, and abducted the remaining one, prove us wrong. Prove what I am claiming now wrong by telling me how you can place a curfew on expressway and you are not there and your men are not there to enforce the curfew and you are, your men are not in that expressway to enforce the curfew they place on. And now you are blaming the travelers for breaching and disobeying the curfew of 5 p.m. In Nigeria, I want international community to reason what I am saying now that Nigeria military committed this atrocity that happened on Sunday. I am making this claim with everything in my heart that from the information and intelligence gathered so far, Nigeria military killed these 30 people. And if you are watching me as a Nigeria soldier, you think I am lying, I am challenging you to come and prove me wrong that the Nigerian military did not commit this crime. This terror attack is done or was committed by Nigerian military. And I want Nigeria Senate, I want the Nigeria House of Representatives to listen and reason what I am saying here. This claim I am making here today, I am accusing Nigeria Army for committing this terror, this terrorism attack that left 30 people dead in the Northeast. Because, like I have explained, I am going to explain the same thing again, all over and all over again, that Nigeria military committed this crime. It is not Boko Haram. Of course, they are Boko Haram members. They are working in hand, in hand with Boko Haram. So, but the people who carried out this killing are Nigerian soldiers. They did it so that Nigeria Senate will release money so that they think that the money they are being debated on in Nigeria Senate, the Senate president met with the presidency, the House of Representatives, the Speaker, they met with the presidency, and they are soliciting for money to be pumped again into Nigeria military. And last year, the, it was about $1.6 billion. I watched Nigeria president saying 2 point something billion. But it is a record that 1.6 billion was pumped into military last, last year. And now they have joined Boko Haram in killing to make sure that the Senate is releasing the money to them. Because before, you, before Nigeria come to give a, 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 a press release again, that IPOP propaganda is accusing them. You must substantiate your claim this time around. You must substantiate your defense this time around that you did not carry, your men in uniform did not carry this killing that happened on Sunday. Because you can't give a law you can't give curfew. You can't impose curfew and you are telling Nigerians and the international community that your military personnel are not in the expressway to enforce the curfew you placed on Nigeria. And then, all of a sudden, you came out to start to blame the victim, to start to blame the people that you are supposed to protect to come to blame the people that have died. The children, innocent children that are very close to God. You come to blame them. You come to blame vulnerable women who don't know nothing. Vulnerable women who have been murdered in cold blood. You don't fear God. You came and accused them that they disobeyed curfew. Let me continue to read what this man said. Mr. Adeniyi, 
The incident would not have happened if travelers respected military directive. Mr. Adeni, you of course, like I said, when they want to when they want to do this evil, they will always send the soldiers from the southern part of Nigeria to give the statement. That is, if you watch what has happened, when military commit atrocity, it is always soldiers from the southern part of Nigeria that will come to give this, uh, break this news and give press, a press statement. When they sentence, when they sentence 12 soldiers to death by firing squad for protesting against the evil of the generals, who gave, the, who read the, the, uh, the sentence? Who read the verdict? It was a Biafran soldier that read the verdict. Sentencing their own Biaf his own Biafran brothers. It was the general from the eastern part of Nigeria that read the verdict. He was even the president or whatever the judge of the court martial. When they have this uh, security meeting and they decided to pull the army from the north from the northeast, is it uh, did it not happen? They had security meeting and they decided to pull the army, the soldier from the northeast. Who came to give the press statement to this journalist? It is. It was the uh, the, the chief of naval staff from the southern part of Nigeria. Every time they commit this atrocity, you cannot see any Muhammad to give this statement. It is. It will always be southern soldiers. Now they have used Yoruba soldier, a uh, general Deni, to give this this. And it's very heartbreaking statement, blaming people who are dead, that it was their fault because they, 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 they disobeyed coffee. And he continues. And then he said, the incident would not have happened if travelers respected military directive, which bans plying of the road from Banishek, a local government headquarter to Medugri, after 5 p.m. You give this curfew after 5 p.m. that nobody must follow that road. Where are you? Where were you? If you give curfew and you, te you are telling me you are not there, military killed these people. It was Nigeria soldier, Nigeria army that killed these people. I am accusing them today that they are guilty of the killings and these killings were carried out by Nigeria military officers. Now, he continued again. It was reported and it was confirmed that Boko Haram came on motorcycles to carry out the attack. This is a Nigeria soldier saying this. It was reported by who? Who was there? If it is not your, your military personnel, who was there to see Boko Haram that they, they came with bike? And how can Boko Haram came with bike, bomb all the buses, burn all the cars, kill 30 people, and probably abducted more than 50? So which of the which of the motorcycle do they use to convert the abducted victims? You say that they give you a report. Who gave the report? Who who is the eyewitness? Is the report coming from the sky? The military, the military personnel carry this killing. That is my allegation today. And I will stand by it. And I will defend it. It is left for Nigeria military to come and clarify how somebody, they got a report that they came by with bike. Who was there? Who is the surviving? How many people survived the attack? That came to tell Nigeria military that they came by with, with bike. Where every everything in that place were raised. Every every vehicle, every house in that place were raised by Boko Haram, which is a sign that nobody survived from that vicinity. And then you came to say they abducted them and they came by bike. So how can these people, about fifty or who knows how many people they adopted? What do they use to convert them? Did they convert them by bike? When Boko Haram are attacking, they have one. Pe the, the each, each bike have two Boko Haram uh, uh, members. Each bike 
we always have two persons. So how do they now carry all the people they abducted, both women and children, in those bikes? And you claim, somebody said, the report, say, who is reporting it to you? This is the question Nigeria needs to be asking a very important question to Nigeria military to, from now. Because we can't continue, even though we are shouting and agitating for Biafra, we cannot keep mood. It is time we begin to ask intelligent, intelligent question, very important question to Nigeria military. It is not just enough that every time they came to say and give report and everybody will assimilate and, and take the report like that, we must begin to ask questions. We must begin to ask military questions now. And the time to begin to ask those questions is now. Now or never, because you that are enjoying in Nigeria today, you that are now enjoying and you think that it is only in the Northeast that people are dying, they are coming for you. In your cities where you are today, Boko Harams are there. In Lagos State, Boko Haram are there. In, uh, uh, in uh, Abia State, Boko Harams are there. In Imo State, Boko Harams are there. In Ebony State, Boko Harams are there. In Enugu State, Boko Harams are there. In River State, Boko Harams are there. In Oyo State, Boko Harams are there. Don't think that you are free. By the time they weaken the system in the entire north, today, as I'm talking to you today, this 12 states in, in the northern part of Nigeria are practicing Sharia law. Immediately, they weaken everything in the northern part of Nigeria. You see, the attack in the south will start one day. As they are attacking Yoruba land, they are attacking Biafra and attacking Middle Belt. This is what I'm telling you. Go and, read, go and write it down. So don't think that you are free. You are not free. You are not free. You see the military personnel that are carrying this attack in the northeast, they are sending them to south very soon. They are transferring them to south. And when they come to south, they will begin to attack in the name of Boko Haram. They will attack and they will tell you Boko Haram is attacking. But they are military men. So don't think that you are free. It is time you wake your ass up and begin to ask questions. How did the military know that they came with bike? Who told them? If you say that they came with by bike, how did they convey the people they abducted? If you cannot answer that question, answer this one. Why did you place curfew on a, on a, 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 in an express road and your men are not there? If you claim that it was... So these are the questions that people be, will begin to ask Nigerian soldiers and they must answer reasonably to convince us that this my claim today is not real. That is that. Now, again, listen to what the president said. The president went to where he, where he traveled to and said he will make sure he safeguard or he, he save all the abducted Nigerians. These people that they were abducted that I'm talking about now. President, the man who is in Asorok, is promising international community and promising Nigeria that they, he, will, he will safeguard them. That he will, he will make sure they come back safe. How can you safeguard people that in Boko Haram hand? How many of the executed people of Nigeria have you safeguarded when they were captured and they were in detention in Boko Haram then and they came publicly to give to make appeal to you to save their life? How did you save their life? Why, did, why is it this one? When you we don't know whether they abducted 100 people, you are now saying you will safeguard and make sure they come back on, on, on hot. How can we believe you? When the chairman of Khan in Adamawa State was captured, abducted by Boko Haram, this man came. I personally, Simon Epa, shared his video where he was pleading to the, to the uh, president of Nigeria. He was pleading to the Khan Christian Association of Nigeria. He pleaded to everybody that they should come and save him. Nobody. Nigeria president did not do anything. Nigeria Senate did not do anything. 
and he was killed like chicken. He was killed like chicken and today the president is coming to promise the entire international community, the Nigeria, that he is going to make sure that these people that the military helped Boko Haram to abduct or that the military abducted and hand over to Boko Haram, that he is going to bring them back alive. And people are believing him. Let me make it very clear today. This is my second allegation. My second allegation to the Nigeria president is that this is only a scam. The abduction of two thousand of this uh, last Sunday by Boko Haram is a scam. It is only a scheme to continue to sponsor terrorism in Nigeria. It is an avenue to pump billions into Boko Haram and ISIS West Africa to continue to buy arms. Because what they're about to do now is that all those people that were captured, especially the Muslims, if they captured Muslims, because now they focus on Christians. If they have captured Muslims, Nigeria government, this man is going to negotiate with these people whom the military handed over to Boko Haram. They are going to negotiate and stroke deal. And the deal is that they are going to pump billions, billions into Boko Haram's den. And then they will release some of them. And if you are paying Boko Haram ransom, what are you paying the ransom for? If you are paying Boko Haram ransom to release these people that they are abducted, and the ransom you are paying to them is just indirectly funding them. And you are releasing 1,400 Boko Haram members this month. Last month, you released 608, making them 2,008 uh, Boko Haram members you have released in two months. And now, you are going to pay them money and you will claim that they have released this because that is what is going to happen. Or, how can a president who did not protect the life of the abducted Nigerians when they were living freely in a territory controlled by Nigeria security agents, how can you now safeguard their life in the hand of terrorists? Is it where when they are captured that you can protect their life? Is it when they are captured and they are about to be slaughtered is when you are going to protect their life? You could not protect their life in the Nigeria territory. Is it when they are in the hand of terrorists, Boko Haram, and Nazis West Africa that you are going to protect them? You are not protecting them. You are funding Boko Haram. You are funding terrorism. And that is the only way you will be able to rescue few of them back to the society and you will use it to play politics. Meanwhile, you have pumped billion into Boko Haram and then you come to say you will protect them. The people you could not protect in their land is when they are in the hand of Boko Haram, you are promising, you stand shamelessly in front of human beings who respect dignity of human life, you are making promise. I am talking to the president, the man who paraded himself as president of Nigeria. You are about to pump money into Boko Haram. I'm making this claim so that it will be on record. Let everybody know that this government of Nigeria is about to pump money into Boko Haram to claim that they want to release the people that they are captured. And any day they release any, any person, they have pumped billion into Boko Haram, and that is indirect sponsor of terrorism. That is two. Now, the, my third issue I want to make clear today is that everybody must, everybody must have read the news that the elders, Northern Elders Forum came to fault this administration that they have failed. And people begin to ask questions. 
Even the one called Femi Adesina that has been disowned by Yoruba people, he came to say that the Northern elders supported PDP. So for that reason, they don't hold their claim credible. I am asking Femi Adesina, who is growing his stomach, is it when the Northern elders came to say that Boko Haram, that this is your government that you are serving and proud of, have failed? Have the government not failed? Are you not the one who, who we are saying that there is, there is an upsurge of Boko Haram attack, Femi Adesina? One thing you should know, Femi, is that this your this your bread you are breathing every day is a gift from God. And Femi, God can decide to seize you from breathing today, and you can't do anything. You that is a Yoruba man that is sensible or was so sensible. Before you join this caliphate. You were a sensible man. Before joining this caliphate. At least I have read some of your column. I have read your article on Biafra. Femi Adesina. And all of a sudden. Your mumuness. Just metamorphosed into something different. That nobody will believe today that you are a Yoruba man because Yoruba people are smart people. Nobody will believe if this is how you were before. I don't think APC will appoint you. I don't think this presidency will appoint you. But it is unfortunate that you who have seen the four walls of university, it is a pity. Femi Adesina, that you, who have risen like a human being, worked for some newspaper for many years, have become something that nobody could believe. You begin to support the evil of this administration. You begin to talk like somebody who have lost it all. You cannot even accept the fact that this government you are serving in has failed. You are only interested in telling Northern elders that they supported PDP. What is the business between who supported PDP and what is happening in Nigeria today? What is the business between who supported PDP and what is happening in Nigeria today. You are not ashamed. And what you could do is to come publicly to tell that to tell Nigerians and the world that the Northern elders supported PDP. Are you not ashamed? And all you do is how to grow your stomach and every sense in you has disappeared. You are a disgrace to Yoruba race. You are, not, you are not behaving like a new generation of Yoruba people. You are a disgrace to Yoruba race that you can come instead of discussing uh, the issue that is happening in Nigeria and have the fear of God or fear of Allah, whichever God you worship, you cannot even fear God, Femi Adesina. You think you are from Caliphate? You think you are from the Northern Nigeria? You think your father is a Fulani? You will serve this administration and you will go back to your village. And thereafter, you will see what you have done to yourself. That you cannot even call a spade a spade. The people who are from the caliphate are telling you that this their brother have failed. And you, because you are protecting your job, 
You don't fear God. You don't know that God gave you the bread. You don't know that God is the one who is the Alpha and Omega. You don't know that God is the one who has the final say of, to anybody. Any day the God will be angry, you, that will be the end of you. And don't pray that God remembers you before you be, because you are yet to repent. Pray that before God remember you, that you have repented. Otherwise, your life will be just in vain. Because you are not better than this woman that is now in Boko Haram hand. You are not better than these 30 people that were killed by Nigeria soldiers. You are not better than them. You don't have two heads. The only difference is that they don't have stomach like you. Your stomach is growing. That is the only difference. But you are not better than them. Not even in smartness because you are not smart anymore. But that is by the way. Now, today you must have also heard the report or read the report of World Bank. You know, people, people should understand that when we are talking on issue of Nigeria, it has become imperative that Femi Adesena is being mentioned. I have, Simon Ekba is not the only person. He is not so important. He is not an important person. But it is sickening that Femi Adesina will come and begin to bluff. Everybody that is making comment on Nigeria security today has mentioned Femi Adesina. I am not the only one. It, it is not that, listen to it, Femi is not an important person. He is nobody. So far, as so long as I am concerned, Femi is nobody. But it is very, very annoying that somebody who was brilliant will come and see evil and he cannot call the evil by name irrespective of who else is god now the world bank report said that 97 percent of poor people in nigeria come from the north the reflection this is the exact reflection of the full knee being in power in Nigeria. They have ruled Nigeria since independent. It is, their ruling of Nigeria is on and off, on and off. They have ruled Nigeria since independent and from the World Bank report, they have 87% of poor people in Nigeria come from the north. Are you people following? 87% Minus 87% from 100%. How, how many did he give you? It means that the Middle Belt, Biafra land, which comprise of Southeast and South-South, Southwest, which is Odudua Republic, will share the remaining percent. That is how bad the, the North is. And the one who is parading, parading himself as Dankote is the richest man in Africa. He is only competing on continuing to maintain the richest man in Africa. Today, there is a report that uh, um, um, Dankote continues to maintain the richest man. What is your richness if your region has 87% of poor people in Nigeria? What has your richness got to do? If your people are poor, and for you to know what we are talking about, I said it yesterday during my live broadcast. This, pre this current president now, as you see him, they don't have hospital in his place. There is no general hospital. If people get sick now in Katsina State, there is no general hospital not only in the entire region, there is no general hospital. And they have president. The only thing they are interested in is their family and their close associate. They are not developing their region. When Jonathan was in power as a president of Nigeria, he was the one who built schools. Almagiri schools in the north. None of this president from Fulani has developed any place in the north. When you go to north, you will see their children 
carrying plates and begging for food and lining up for food in the street. And they have been ruling Nigeria. They have been ruling Nigeria from independent. What do they do? They are competing for who will breed children, more children. The other day, I was watching the, the House of Representative leader. He came to the House of Representative to the Green Chamber with four wives. He came there with four wives to display his wealth in his wife. Four wives. He came to the chamber with four wives and called them by their names to stand up. They stood up and he displayed them. And he claimed he had 27 children. That is, why would there be poverty in the north? The only thing they are thinking is to how to increase their population, how to increase their population, and then one man is having 27 children. And he said that his father has 40 children. He is competing with his father. And it is making national news. It becomes national news. Newspapers are carrying it. But the issue of national importance, the newspaper will not carry it. The newspaper will not carry how many persons were abducted by Boko Haram by this army, Nigeria military, on Sunday. They will not tell you how did Boko Haram, how did army kill Boko Haram by airstrike. Nigeria newspaper will not tell you. But they are reporting somebody who the father has given birth to or have breeded about 40 children and he is 27 and counting. And he came to Green Chamber. Where we are, when we are debating issue of security of life and property in Nigeria, Fulani man brought four wives in Green Chamber and displayed his four wife. Well-fed wife. And people are laughing. Including the Speaker of House of Representatives had fun with that displayment, the displaying of that foolish man who is a House of Representatives. The Speaker of House of Representatives was laughing. Having fun. When Nigeria security is down, they are having fun when a man is displaying four wives and telling you that his powerfulness how powerful he is. He is powerful in the Green Chamber and he is powerful at home. And it becomes something that the Speaker of House of Representatives is laughing. Man who is well, well educated, well read, well, a very smart man. He left the issue of importance and start to laugh over four wives and 27 children and counting. And Nigeria is going down. And Boko Haram is killing. And military is playing is placing coffee. How many of you where did you have where have you read in Nigeria news that military place coffee in a, that is a coffee in in northeast until today? I have never read it in Nigeria newspaper that military now plays coffee. Except they only announce it to our people. Because how can we Nigerians come today to know that military plays coffee from 5 p.m.? How can you place coffee from 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. in Nigeria, there is still sun. You can be placing coffee based on the weather. When is the night coming? When is the night falling? You are placing coffee. Who knows whether the coffee is from uh, the, the whole day? Who knows? And you say you place coffee for, for uh, you, you you place coffee for, uh, at five p.m. when the sun is still sh shining. So, eighty-seven percent of poverty in Nigeria of poor people in Nigeria is in the north, and they have been ruling Nigeria for decades. They have been ruling Nigeria since independence. The only person, the only person that ruled Nigeria at least for consecutive eight years without interruption from any other region is Obasanjo. Obasanjo is the only person from the south who have ruled Nigeria for eight years without interruption. The rest of every governance in Nigeria 
has been Hausa Fulani. But today, there are people are the poorest in Nigeria. Not only that they are poor, the, all the disease in Nigeria is in the north. Every disease that you think of in Nigeria today is in the north. Leprosy is in the north. Blindness is in the north. Everything you can think of, disease that you can think of today is in the north. And there is no hospital. They don't have hospital. They are coming. I have friends in, from the northern people. But my friends, if you are offended by what I am saying now, I am not sorry because you, it is fact. If you are my friend, a politician from the north, and you are offended by what I am saying today, what you are watching on this video, I am not sorry. What I am saying is not just, is not propaganda, it is a fact. It is a fact that when you people are telling us to go and hold our leaders uh, accountable in, in Biafra land for infrastructural development, you come anytime we are detained for Biafra, you will say we should go and hold our people responsible. Are you seeing any kind of disease in, uh, in Biafra land? Don't you see that we have hospitals in Biafra land? We may not have road. We may not have every social amenity. But our politicians are not as wicked, as bad as the president that have been ruling Nigeria from the northern part of Nigeria. Our corrupt politicians from Biafra land are not as bad as, both, as all of you from the north. You people are evil. Our politicians are corrupt, we agree. Our politicians are bad, we agree. Our politicians are embezzling money, we agree. But they are not as bad as people from the northern part of Nigeria. You people, all the politicians from the north are all evil. How can you be ruling Nigeria since independent? You don't have hospital, you don't have empowerment, you don't empower your youth. All of them are illiterate, they don't go to school, they don't even the imagine that Jonathan built, they don't go to school, you don't encourage them to go to school. The only thing you encourage them to do is to carry arm, is to carry 8K47. How can you have, for example, how can you be releasing 1,400 Boko Haram members? Everybody, every youth in the north today is Boko Haram member. All those people you see running in the streets, if they are not carrying arm today, doesn't mean they are not going to carry the arm tomorrow. Because they don't have any other thing to do than to join militancy, than to join terrorism. You have, you have killed their future. You have, you have robbed everything out of their life. And there is nothing they can do other than joining Boko Haram. And that is why you can release up to 1,400 persons in one single day. And they were Boko Haram members. And that is why in last month, you are releasing 608 persons who are Boko Haram members, young men, there is nothing they can do. They will go back to Boko Haram. They will go back to their terrorism. Since 2015, you have released thousands and thousands of young men who are Boko Haram members. And then you will come to start telling us to hold our, our, our politicians accountable. Who are you to tell us to hold our politicians accountable? You don't have the moral rights because you are evil. You are evil. You ha your region today is the most wretched region anywhere in the world. Not is the most poverty, is the poverty capital of the world. When Nigeria was declared poverty capital of the world, then we are talking about the northern Nigeria. It is not in Biafra land. Poverty is not in Yoruba land. You don't see the disease you see in North in Yoruba land. You don't see the disease you see in the North in Middle Belt. You don't see the disease you see in the North in Biafra land. You cannot see them. So you don't have any moral right to tell us to hold our politicians accountable, no matter how bad they are, no matter how corrupt they are. You see, Oji, you see this uh, Theodore Oji, Theodore Oji, what is he called? He embezzled billions, billions from Abia State. But go to Abia State today, people are not poor. That is the difference. OG that you are parading today through the EFCC embezzled billions of dollars, billions of nairas, 
of Abia people, but you cannot see the kind of disease you see in the north in Abia state. You cannot see the kind of poverty you see in the north in Abia state. You cannot, not only this Theodora Oji, the person, the Ojos of Kali you jailed now is also from Abia state. He has embezzled all the resources, all the money in Abia state as a governor, and today you jailed him, but Abia state is not as wretched as in northern part of Nigeria. You cannot see person begging as an evil person in Abia state, carrying something to beg in the street. But the governor has embezzled the state. And that is what we are talking about. You do not have that moral right to come to my page to tell me to hold my politicians accountable because you don't have that moral right. Your people have killed you. That you are evil from the north. You are evil as a Fulani man. You don't have moral right to tell me, not me, not anybody from evil Yoruba land. As Lagos State is today, they have embezzled, all the governors in Lagos State have embezzled money. But you cannot see the poverty in Lagos State as it is in the north. As the River State today, this Amechi that you appointed minister, he embezzled River State money. The accusation is there. He sponsored APC presidential election in 2015. He, all the money in, in River State finished because of Amechi and River people are not poor like in the North. I can begin to mention names and names and names and we don't hold our politicians accountable because they are not as wicked as you. Yes, they are corrupt, we agree. Yes, they are bad, we agree. But they are not as bad as you people from northern part of Nigeria. You are evil. How can you be ruling Nigeria for many years and you continue what bank report is telling us today that the 80% of poverty in Nigeria is in the north. And you have the Africa richest man who is from the northern part of Nigeria. You have all the president, all the military president, all military presidents are from the north. Today, a batch of loot that is coming, $308 million coming from a batch of loot. Abacha is from the north. All of you. And you come to tell us to hold our politicians accountable. You don't have shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. But the point is that you people don't have shame. You are different species. You are different kind of human beings. You don't have shame. If you have shame, you cannot even talk. When Biafrans, when Oduduwa people are talking... When southern part of Nigerians are talking, you, you cannot talk. You should be ashamed. I am talking to everybody from northern Nigeria. Whether you are Fulani or Hausa, you should be ashamed. You don't have right, you don't have that moral right to talk when anybody from southern part of Nigeria are talking. Because you are evil. Your politicians are demons. I can't just understand, I can't imagine it. That after your years of ruling Nigeria, you become the poverty capital of the world. And today, World Bank is reporting that you are 80, 87 percent is all the all the aid that is coming to Nigeria is going to the north. This 400 million dollar that America give in aid, it is going to go to the north. Where is the money going? All the aid that you have been receiving since 2015, since the beginning of war on Boko Haram, international community has been pumping billions and billions of dollars to the north. Is anywhere in Biafra receiving that money? No. Is there any place, any state in Biafra land that is going to share this money now that America sent to Nigeria? No, no state. In the in Biafra land is going to benefit from that money, and when we when we are talking of Biafra, you will say go and hold your your uh, this thing accountable, and then you talk you talk about head bridge, a uh, uh, head bridge head bridge is head bridge not responsibility of government? You said you are building head bridge. Who will build the head bridge in the first place? Is it not government? Is, is the head bridge, what is, how much have you pumped in head bridge? How much? We want to see the financial report of the money spent on building head bridge uh, today. 
How much have been pumped and how much are you making from Biafra land every month? What is the GDP? The money that you are making as Nigeria is making today. How many? Listen, man, let me tell you people. You see the foreign remittance that is coming to Nigeria, 100% of money, international remittance that are coming to Nigeria are coming from the western part of Nigeria. How many of you, the northern people, are abroad? How many? How many of you, calculated by ratio, how many of you are abroad remitting money to Nigeria? It is Yoruba and Igbos. It is the southern part of Nigeria that are remitting money to Nigeria. How many billions do we remit every year to Nigeria? How many is coming from people from the north? None. And you people are talking every time we talk about Biafra, every time we talk about disintegration, you say we should hold our, our uh, uh, politicians accountable and you don't have that shame to tell us that anymore. It should stop from today after the report of this World Bank, it should stop. Anybody that I see in my page telling me to hold any politician in Biafra land accountable, I will personally insult you. I will begin to insult you and I will call you names because you don't have moral right to come to my page and tell me to hold my politicians accountable that they have embezzled money meant to develop Igbo land. They have embezzled money meant to develop Biafra land and I should hold them accountable. I, I am not going to hold them accountable and nobody is going to hold them accountable so long as the, that advice is coming from you because you don't have the moral right. You don't have the moral right. I have repeated this and I'm going to be repeating it again because that is the only way some people will understand me. I have to repeat myself, repeat myself all over, all over again before people will understand. And I am repeating myself again. You don't, as a Usa man, as a Fulani man, as a man from the northern part of Nigeria, you don't have moral right to question our politician from Biafra, our politician from the southern part of Nigeria, because we are angels compared to you. All, even this all Jews of Kalo that you jailed is angel. Compared to a politician from the north, this Theodora Oji that you are parading today and molesting and humiliating in public for having many companies and many accounts is an angel compared to the northern politicians because people have benefited from him. People who are close to him has benefited from him. All those companies you have seen, you are sharing in the internet, those companies have employed Nigerians and they are paying salary to them. But how many of you in the north can do that? How many of you in the north can do that? What you do is take the money and travel to Dubai like this Brutai. This Brutai have billions of dollars worth of property in Dubai. He is denying it. All the military chiefs, they go to Dubai, they go to Saudi Arabia, they go to Qatar and start buying, in, and start buying properties in all those Muslim countries. They think we don't know. They can never invest that money in Nigeria. But Biafras, this corrupt Biafras that you are jailing today, all of them have their companies in Nigeria and they have employed Nigerians. So there are angels compared to you evil, not only that you are evil, you are sponsoring terrorism in addition to your evilness, you are sponsoring killings of Nigeria in addition to your political witch hunting, you are sponsoring terrorism. You are arming Boko Haram. You are arming Hesmen. You are giving Hesmen cows. And when you gave them cows, you gave them guns, you gave them AK-47 to go and start killing people and committing jihad. You are satanic. All the politicians from the north, from the president down to the senior president, you are satanic. You don't have right to Tell us to question our politicians. No matter how bad, no matter how corrupt, you people, it has come to the it has come to the point that we will become vocals and we will be insulting you people. How can we be talking and playing politics and people are being killed every day? Every day, military are killed. Every day, civilians are killed. Every day, house arrest. 
Every day communities are raised. Every day there is barrier, there is secret barrier by police soldier. And you people think we can just keep quiet? We are shouting this so that it will draw attention of everybody that can watch this video. It is enough. Thank you.